In this video, I want to talk about this tool called Langchain, and it's a way to connect OpenAI and large language models basically to the world. You can have them do anything you want. So these commands will install it. We'll run some imports here. And here's a quick little math example. So we could ask a language model um, what is this times this, these two huge numbers, right? And it might guess at the answer uh, if it's ever seen the answer before. But if we use Langchain, we can instead give the language model a calculator called LLM Math. And now the language model can call the calculator to get the exact answer. So let's run this. So you can see that the agent, the language model sees it has a math problem. So it says, I need to use a calculator to solve this. So the action is a calculator. The input is the math problem. And the output is the correct answer, we hope. And let's just verify that. Um, that looks true to me, so that's good. Uh, not only can we do this kind of math problem, we can do, you know, harder math problems, like what is the log of this times pi, right? So it says, oh, I need to calculate the log of a product, inputs the log here, and gives us this exact answer. Now, if you tried putting this into a normal, um, uh, let's just test the answer really fast. Uh, here, if you tried, if you tried, that looks pretty good to me. True. But I got it right. So if you tried asking a normal language model, uh, this question, uh, it would most likely get it wrong, but with Langchain, we can give language models powerful tools like a calculator. Now what's even more powerful is of course coding. So we can let the language model code too. So we'll define this uh, Python REPL tool here, not define it, but just load it in and we'll give that to the agent. We could say, uh, write a function that outputs a Christmas tree and run the function. So now our language model <laughs> Uh, says, I need to write a function that prints out a Christmas tree. So it says, okay, I'm going to use the Python read about print loop tool. And so its input is the function def Christmas tree. And it's very simple here. It just prints out the tree directly. And then it says, I need to call the function. Okay. So it goes back to Python again, calls its function that it just wrote. And we get this beautiful Christmas tree here. And it says, I know the final answer now. The output of the Christmas tree function is a Christmas tree with a star at the top, three lines of increasing length, and a line of stars at the bottom. Now let's say we want to do something a little more complicated, like we could say write a function that outputs a Christmas tree of variable, variable height, and run that. All right, so it goes back to Python. Now it's using a loop with this complicated print statement, which will put the right amount of stars and spacings. And it calls its own function on the input of five, and we get a five length, one, two, three, four, five length tall Christmas tree. So it knows the final answer there. And um, is your mind not blown right now? My mind is blown. Not only can it write code now, but it can run the code. Okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you're not losing your mind over this, I don't know what will, okay? All right, let's do a little practical example. Let's get the current price of Apple stock. Okay. So it goes to Python. It uses Y Finance, a package. And okay, here we go. It, it, it ran into an error, okay? <clears throat> so, let's see what happened. 
Why finance failed to decrypt Yahoo data response? I need to find another way to get the stock price. So see how it sees the error and then it tries to figure out a different way. So now it's trying to use ixfinance.stocks, but we don't have the module. Then it tries to pip install it, <clears throat> but it says invalid syntax. It's trying to use the command line. We didn't give it the command line. It tries to use a terminal. We didn't give it the terminal. It tries to use a command prompt. We didn't give the command. So anyways, it got stuck trying to install this, this module. But if we give it the right module or if we tell it which one to use, like let's try Wi Fi, let's try Yahoo Fin. Uh, use Yahoo Fin. Okay, let's try that. Okay, failed again. So this is, uh, you know, it's not perfect. Let's try Y Finance again. It's not decrypting the answer. Let's see. Let's say use Y use Y Finance to get a current Apple stock price. <laughs> All right, it's trying. Oh, well, this worked the last time I ran it. It's a bit probabilistic, too, you see. Uh, let's try just saying, what's the latest price for Apple stock? It, it doesn't, uh, maybe I need an API key. All right. What's the current date? This this will work. There, look at that. 2023, March 3rd, 11.05. If you ask a normal language model what the current date is, it's not going to know. But this can use code to get the, uh, the current date. And I could say, like, uh, what day of the week is it? <clears throat> so it uses date time, date dot today, formats the string, and it tells me it's a Friday. That's right. I could say, what day will 2025, February 3rd be? What day of the week? Okay. So it imports date time. It makes the date. And it tells me it's a Monday. And you can fact check that. I bet it's probably right. Who knows? All right, last thing really fast in this video. We can make our own tools. So we can define a tool like this. It's a function that takes in a string and outputs a string. That's it. And you want to put good documentation here because the AI reads this and it tells it how to use the tool. So this tool here is called our tool, and I say that it's a guessing game. So it returns the length of the input. So we'll give that to the agent, and then I'll say, what input to our tool gets the output of three? And the agent says, I need to figure out what input will give me the output of three. So it tries ABC, gets three, and it says, I now know the final answer, ABC. Let's try five. Oh, it picked hello. One, two, three, four, five. Look at that. What a smarty, smarty AI. Okay, what, I'll, be, I'll say what English word input gets the output of seven? Maybe this will give us an English word with seven characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bananas. How about 13? Whoa, too long. Oh my God, it's going crazy. It's... <laughs> All right, look. Look at this. It's, I, even though I didn't get it right, this is so freaking cool. I need to find a word that is 13 characters long. It tries supercalifragilisticexpialidocious 34. That's too long. I need to find a shorter word, okay? Anti-disaster... 
Arianism, 28. Oops, still too long. I need to find a shorter word, okay. Pneumonotrapmicroscopicsilicovolcanoconiosis. 45, too long. <clears throat> this was close. Hippopotamus, 12. Need to find a longer one. Flox, flocks in us, uh, 29, syllabub, I'm not sure that's a word, 8, honorific, 27. <clears throat> okay, this is an interesting thing. This is a failure uh, of this, is that I think if it goes on too long, it just says that it's found the right answer. This is not a 13 length word here, honorific, br 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 br, but it tried. Okay. So you can't always trust it, even if it says it has the right answer too. Uh, let's try give it one more. Like a, let's, what's a 15 length word? Oh, come on, you could do it. Syllabub, not syllabub. How about just four? Okay, test, good job. All right, now here's one more example. This one has an external state that I maintain. It's just a string. And it has two tools. So it has a reset game tool and it has a take turn tool. So the take turn, whatever the input is, it adds the last character to the state. So we can play the game ourselves. So let's just define these and um, let's play the game ourselves. We can say take turn. I can say, hey. Now the output says, Oh wait, let's reset the game. Reset game first with the empty string. Okay, the output is blank. So now if I take turn and I say hi, the output is H. <clears throat> so you can see that it takes up to, it takes the first character, I suppose. Let's see, A, B, C. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, it takes the first character and appends it to the output. So if I just keep running this, keep at A's, and then I could put like H, E, Y, and it'll just add another H to the end there. See that? All right, so it's a little game. And we want the AI to play this game. And really fast, I'm just going to take this documentation away and just say like reset. And then this one, I'm going to take this away and just say yes. Okay, so the, I'm not going to give the AI really what these functions do. And let's tell it to figure out how to play the game and get the output. Hello, use reset game to try again. Let's not even tell it that. So let's just say play the game, get the output. Hello, let's run that. So it tries putting in hello. It gets nothing as the output. I'm going to take another turn. Hello, nothing, reset the game, alpha, it failed. It said, I know the final answer, the final answer is hello. No, it failed. But if we tell it what the functions actually do, it performs a lot better, usually. So it says, I need to add characters to the string until it says hello. So it puts in an H, it gets an H, I need to add an E. So it puts in an E, it gets H E. I need to add two more letters. Puts in L L, it gets H E L. Hey, wait a minute, I need to add an O. Puts in O, it got hello. Final answer, hello. All right, it got closer. It didn't get the full answer here of L L O. It got a little confused. Okay, play the game and get the, let's try it, the exact output. Hello. And this says, Let's make this documentation very clear. It does not append the last character. Uh, calling this function appends the first letter of query to the state. We'll call this state here. This resets calling this function resets the state to be blank. All right, let's give it another try. So I need to add H, I need to add E, I need to add L, I need to add L, 
I need to add O, so it got it right. So this is just kind of an example of uh, tools that work on a global state that can stick around. The agent can continue to reason as it sees outputs. And also this is, it shows the importance of good documentation. Probably having even more documentation here would be great because the AI is reading this to figure out what these functions do to get its tasks done. So I'm very excited about this. Obviously, it can do a lot more. You can give it access to your computer with the terminal. You can give it access to the to the web with requests. It can search the it can search the web. It can write files on your computer. It can open applications. The possibilities are endless. This has connected AI to our world, and we're going to see a lot of people using these. So I wanted to show this and maybe open up discussion about creating more tools for this. How would you want to use this? Uh, let me know in the comments and sorry for this long, confusing video and all the coughing. I'm not sick. I just, some, some of this caught in my throat, but yeah. Anyways, I want to just keep making quick videos and keep you all up to date on the craziness that is our lives today. All right, bye.